The Director's Cut to End All Director's Cut was released on home media in November of 2006, following a lengthy restoration and legal battle to secure all the necessary permissions and rights. The story and players are all the same. Christopher Reeve returns as Superman and is forced to fight the forces of evil, led by the menacing Terrence Stamp, while simultaneously juggling a relationship with the playful Margot Kidder. Beyond that basic plot synopsis, however, is where these two films diverge. This re-edited superhero adventure is ostensibly an entirely different movie, with as much as half of the film comprised of new scenes and dialogue. As its title suggests, and an opening text card clarify, this 116-minute film is the true vision of the movie's original director, Richard Donner, who was kicked off the project in 1977, before he had an opportunity to finish production. Filmed in conjunction with his predecessor, Donner had reportedly completed nearly 75% of principal photography on this sequel, before Richard Lester replaced him. As as a result, Lester was forced to reshoot a large majority of the film in order to obtain a full directing credit, which I imagine is the primary cause of the original version's longer scenes, unnecessarily padded with empty material. Elements restored in this tighter and quicker film are all 15 minutes of Marlon Brando's scenes as Superman's ghost-like father, a streamlined opening that far more effectively ties into the events of the first film, and plenty more of the scene-stealing Gene Hackman, who refused to return for a new director having already finished all of his work. Gone are the slapstick jokes and silly tone that undermine the original, replaced with short moments moments and lines of dialogue that truly bring this PG-rated film together in a way that almost embarrasses the theatrical version. And don't fall down, because you're just going to have to get up again. No, 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 don't be crazy now. What? It is you. I guess I've known this for the longest time. You realize, of course. If you'd been wrong, Clark Kent would have been killed. Well, they're blank? Gotcha. This may be the same story, but it's pieced together with far more cohesion and pacing. A major flaw of the original is thankfully addressed here, when Reeves' desperation to restore his forfeited powers is met with an emotional scene opposite Brando, full of actual consequence and importance. Similarly, Stamp's throwaway line about Superman's true weakness being his compassion towards humans is dutifully addressed during the film's low-key climax when he warns Reeves, the death of others means more to you than your own. Sadly, famed composer John Williams wasn't able to score this version either, but Donner smartly chose to ignore Ken Thorne's work and reuse Williams' music in unreleased cues from the first film. The inclusion of an exclusive John Williams score really can't be understated, effortlessly elevating every scene to cinematic heights. The restored effects and consistent visual styles are also a marked improvement, but a reused Deus Machina ending is an unfortunate misstep for a film that otherwise got everything right. Which is especially impressive when you consider Donner was working with half-finished material over 30 years old. Film students and Superman fans owe it to themselves to seek out this version, as it's a fine example of what different directors and visions can bring to a film. Superman 2 The Richard Donner Cut. Coherent improvements provide fantastic entertainment. The Rate-O-Matic with my score, an 8. Although there were a few moments and jokes I missed from the original, this re-release was by all accounts a better movie, especially since it corrected the biggest flaws I had with the theatrical version. I thought the Richard Donner cut was great. 